The Downtown Rams podcast is brought to you by our proud sponsors, Rams on Demand, Seat Giant, Throwback Joe, and now our new sponsor, Kayvon Webster's new L.A. food truck, Vibe 305, from South Beach to Sunset. Hashtag catch a vibe. For more information, check out Vibe305.com today. Now enjoy the show. 35-30, Robert Wood, first down 20, 10-5, touchdown, L.A. It's a blinding light underneath the dirt down. So it's Goff who keeps it, and Goff goes crashing into the end zone. Sixth Street Bridge. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there and comes away with his third sack of the afternoon. Not immediately in sack. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. When will you save me? Todd Gurley, 20, 10, Gurley for MVP. Touchdown, LA. And he gets gobbled up. Savage has to eat it as Michael Brocker picks up the sack. He picks. Nikhil Roby coming. He's decked by two pounds. Brandon Cooks, incredible! For the first time since 2003, the Rams are NFC West champions. Welcome back, guys, to episode 125 of the Downtown Rams podcast. It is going to be a fun one because the Rams just had a statement win uh, at the Coliseum in front of a huge crowd on Thursday night football and they got vengeance on the Minnesota Vikings 38-31 is your final after friend of the podcast John Franklin Myers ends up winning the game forcing a fumble this was quite the game Um, I am going to go into it I just got to say first thing that really comes to mind you know Jared Goff played one of the best regular season football games I've seen. And I, I wouldn't say it's the best because I, I I was going to say it was the best until I realized, really, when you think about it, the, the opener in 2013, Peyton Manning throwing five, uh, seven touchdowns in a game, I felt like that was probably the best regular season uh, performance out of a quarterback I've ever seen, but Goff finishes with a perfect passer rating, throwing for more than 30 times, 33 times, 26 completions, 465 yards. He had an average pass, um, he, he had an average yards per pass completion at 14.1 and five touchdowns, zero interceptions. He had one sack, uh, one sack. I mean, I can't really believe it. Um, I Wow. I mean, just wow. I posted an article on Downtown Rams. Uh, Jerry Goff has been considered, in my for my money, he was the most underrated quarterback in the sport. That's what I was saying. That was what I was rolling with, and I felt that was fair. After tonight, I don't know who's going to, underrate him he had an unbelievable game against the likes of a secondary that boasts uh Harrison Smith the best safety in football Anderson Deho um and then you know the cornerbacks obviously Mike Hughes the rookie made a lot of noise in this one but you know the big one Xavier Rhodes they have stars like Eric Kendricks and Anthony Barr that he made silly um Danell Hunter, I get it, Everson Griffin didn't play, but this defense is really good, really talented, and Jared Goff just absolutely was surgical against them. There's no other way to put it. Um, Goff threw over for over 100 yards to three different receivers. The three receivers, I said, coming into the year, would all go over the 1,000-yard mark, and many laughed at me for saying that. Well, right now, they would have to be on that path. Cooper Cup, 9 catches, 162 yards, and 2 touchdowns. Brandon Cooks, 7 catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Robert Woods, 5 catches, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Todd Gurley, 
Four catches, 73 yards, and a touchdown. He was even close. After that, Gerald Everett, one catch for 13 yards. This trio of receivers is the best in the league. You can make an argument for Tampa Bay. Mike Evans, Deshaun Jackson, uh, Chris Godwin. You can make an argument. I mean, you used to be able to make an argument um, You know, back when Martavis Bryant was really one of the better young receivers in the league. You could make an argument for the Steelers with Antonio Brown and, well, Juju Smith-Schuster and Martavis Bryant. Now, it's really just Tampa Bay, and I'd say I would take the Rams over Tampa Bay. And then Kansas City, uh, Chris Conley, along with those uh, two star receivers, Sammy Watkins and Tyreek Hill. But man, oh man, the Rams, back-to-back Thursday night wins, uh, back-to-back years. They won in phenomenal fashion last year in a game that really they they should have won by more um, against the 49ers last year. And it came down to the last play of the game, and Aaron Donald had the famous uh, sack on fourth down to seal the deal. Well, this one, the friend of the podcast and the man who just celebrated his birthday the night before, John Franklin Myers, comes up with the fumble, uh, forced fumble on Kirk Cousins, and that's what does it. Um, The Rams did let this get closer. Sam Ficken missed a field goal. Um, You know, this definitely, you can look at the Johnny Hacker throw, um, the, the fake punt. Josh Reynolds not really trying to get back to the ball. I mean, there were missed opportunities, but this is a statement game. The Rams move to 4-0. They're 3-0 at home. They've only played one road game, and they are going to see a lot of the road uh, moving forward, but they have already made a huge statement. Todd Gurley, 17 rushes for 83 yards. They didn't even really need him to get over the, the 20 carry mark. This was just a surgical approach on offense. Goff had open receivers, and it didn't matter if they were open, they were covered. He made one of the best throws I've ever seen, uh, running to his right, throwing um, on the run towards the corner of the end zone and getting Cooper Cup right before he went out of bounds. Pretty crazy stuff there. Uh, Just a phenomenal game for the offense. I do want to touch on the defense because, well, I said it was 38-31. The Vikings allowed 31, or the the Rams allowed 31 points to the Vikings. Adam Thielen and Stefan Diggs both went over 100 yards. Last year, the Rams did a nice job of keeping Stefan Diggs in check. Only had, I I think they held him under 50 yards receiving, and Thielen went for um, over 100 yards last year in a touchdown. Well, he did it again this year. He's quickly turning into one of the Ram killers in this league. And aside from that, I mean, Kyle Rudolph, five catches, 57 yards. Laquan Treadwell, four catches, 47 yards. Aldrick Robinson had two catches, 33 yards, and two touchdowns. The, the crazy thing, and I think the thing that really helped the Rams was their ability to, I mean, really, Minnesota had Dalvin Cook on a pitch count, but Dalvin Cook wasn't getting anywhere. 10 carries, 20 yards. The leading rusher for Minnesota, Kirk Cousins. Four runs for 28 yards. The next guy behind Dalvin Cook, Rock Thomas, a UDFA who just got his chance to play this game. One rush for four yards. Latavius Murray, two rushes for two yards. Kirk Cousins was great. 36 of 50, 422 yards, three touchdowns. The Rams had a more balanced approach, and even still, Jared Goff throwing, I mean, a considerably less amount of passes than Kirk Cousins at 17. Goff throws for two more touchdowns. He has a perfect passer rating. Only seven incompletions and over 400, over 400 yards for the first time in his career. His highest was 355. Career best, or 354. You wouldn't need 355 to pass it. He tied that back-to-back games. 
and he just went out there and just threw for over 450 yards. Outdueled Kirk Cousins. Carried the Rams in a way. I mean, this offense really carried the load. It was a big game for the Rams. Really showing that, look, it, I mean, it's tough. It, it really is tough when you don't get the production you need out of your defense. You clearly saw that Marcus Peters wasn't himself. He was not himself. That was obvious. But the way the Rams were able to get out of this game with a win, it's not about how you win or, or how you, I mean, it's about just winning. The Rams' offense it was just absolutely unstoppable. And yet, this game was a, a one-possession game because the Vikings, albeit the Rams' defense kind of came on strong towards the end, the Vikings would never go away. In this game, John Johnson finished with a team-high 11 tackles, 6 solo tackles, and 2 pass breakups, but he struggled. There was a, a defensive breakdown, and that led to a Adam Thielen touchdown. Corey Littleton, nine tackles, five solo, a tackle for a loss, two pass breakups. He had a good game, but there were times where he struggled. Rameek Wilson, seven tackles, seven solo, two tackles for a loss. He's getting better, but he struggled as well, and especially in coverage. Marcus Peters, six tackles. Marcus Peters struggled. I mean, he allowed a touchdown to Aldrick Robinson. He was not himself tonight. The Rams put him out there. I don't know if he should have played, but Marcus Peters was out there, and I, he really, he didn't look himself. Still, the Rams get the win. Marcus Peters comes out healthy. Everything, everything's great. LaMarcus Joyner, six tackles, five solo, struggled. Marquis Christian, six tackles, five solo, two sacks. Or sorry, <laughs> six tackles, five solo, and a pass breakup that was huge. Absolutely huge pass breakup um, by Marquis Christian. I believe that was on Rock Thomas. He struggled a little bit as well. Although he had some really he had some really good moments. Marky Christian's turning into a heck of a player. Aaron Donald, five tackles, three solo, two sacks, two f- tackles for a loss, four hits on the quarterback. Aaron Donald, and, and this is the thing that people need to understand. Aaron Donald did not struggle in this game. Aaron Donald was having his way. The Rams weren't getting to Cousins. They weren't sacking Cousins, but they were putting pressure on him. Goff had a pretty clean pocket throughout the entire game. I mean, there was that one sack that was given up. And I I would, I mean, Goff should have, he definitely should step up in the pocket. But, I mean, Whitworth gave up the sack. I um, was just, you know, Aaron Donald, two sacks. Obviously, that, that huge one. Sam Shields had himself a rough night. Now, he made a couple really nice plays, but he had himself a rough night. Four tackles, three solo, a pass breakup. And Dominican Sue, he had a sack, a tackle for a loss, a pass batted down, and two hits on the quarterback. He had a good game. I think all game, John Franklin Myers, he had the task of going up against the best offensive lineman on that on that team, Riley Reef, and he really gave him his money's worth. He he did a nice job. I thought he was softening up the offensive line, or at least Riley Reef, for the big blow. And sure enough, he got it on that last play, forcing the fumble. Dominican Sue falls on it, recovers it, and uh, that's all she wrote. Rams come away with the win. That was just a huge, absolutely huge turn of events. And I'm not saying the Vikings are going to tie it up there, but that was eerily similar 
to when Brian Hoyer dropped back to pass for the 49ers and was looking to try to steal that game away from the Rams when Aaron Donald threw him to the turf. Eerily similar. Thursday Night Football, one possession game, very eerily similar. The Rams moved to 4-0. The Vikings are going to have to play the Philadelphia Eagles after dropping to 1-2-1. Two, and one. Um, They have not won on the road. They're 0-1-1. Oh, one, one. The Rams are 3-0 and oh at home. They're 4-0 oh right now. They head to Seattle to play the Seattle Seahawks, who are pretty much in the state where the Rams left them the last time they played them in Seattle. That was a blowout. I don't see how that game's close. I really don't see how the Rams don't end up blowing out Seattle. I would love to know what that line is going to end up being. Because I have no idea. Absolutely none. I mean, that that could be that could be a serious Buffalo Bills looking line with like the Rams are getting seven are yeah, are getting 17 points. They're 17 point favorites. Like you could literally see that. I that's tough cuz it you know when you, when it comes down to that, I mean I I think yeah, I think they're going to be I'll guess the line right now is 16 and a half. And it might go up, it might go down, but it's going to start off at 16 and a half. That is that's my guess for the line for the Rams Seahawks. But the the point is the Rams made it through this tough part these these two games, I'm not saying Arizona was tough, and I'm not saying Oakland was tough, but these two games, fans knew these were going to be the tough ones to start off. This was going to kind of give you your your little hits to the head and show basically the world how how big, how strong your chin was, like a boxing term. And the Rams proved in this game without a key to leap. In, I mean, they literally just lost Aqib Tlaib for the majority of the season. He's now going to be out eight weeks. The Rams come away with this win. Jared Goff makes Sean McVay look like a genius for sitting this entire offense in preseason. This was week four. So... Essentially, preseason, what, there's four weeks. This would have to be about where the Rams would be if they played their, um, you know, in a regular season. They, they played preseason. It's, it's week four. And this offense looks unstoppable. It's only week four, and this offense looks unstoppable. You know what the Rams were doing last week, or, or last year, during week four, they were trying desperately to fight and claw their way back in a game that they probably got screwed over in at the beginning when Todd Gurley had the touchdown. He fumbled, but the problem is, you know, the ball, it, it was close to being a touchdown. They rule it a uh, fumble, goes out of the back of the end zone, the awful rule in the rule book where it goes to Seattle, it's a touchback, all of that. The Rams were fighting and clawing. Goff was leading their way down the field, and it came down to a Cooper Cup drop where Goff put it on the money. It was a laser, and Cooper Cup couldn't hold on to it. Not to be. That Rams team, by the way, the first four games last year, do you know what their record was? Let's see. They started off 1-0. and They beat the... Indianapolis Colts by almost 40 points. That Rams team last year then went to, he, they, they stayed in the Coliseum. I went out to see them. And they lost to the Washington Redskins that Kirk Cousins orchestrated. And that right there, that was their first loss of the season after Jared Goff threw a game-losing interception. He also missed Robert Woods wide open in the end zone, waited way too long, and missed his throw. So the Rams move to, or they fall to 1-1, and and they go on Thursday night football 
in a game, I mean, keep in mind, this is the same Rams team that's coming off the 4-12 and season the year before, just hired a brand new coach, everything's new, people aren't sure where they're going to be, what this team is. They go into Thursday Night Football, they put up 41 points, they give up 39, but they put up 41 points, and things that start to make you feel, oh, this is the same old Rams. Well, they come away with the win, they beat the 49ers, and they prove otherwise. So, that's last year. That is last year. So we're at the 2-1 and one mark. And this year, we were at the 3-0 and oh mark. Those are the first three games. Now, the Rams then... They actually then go to, <laughs> I got that confused. They then go into Dallas. And they beat Dallas 35 to 30. So they start off 3 and 1. And then they come back to the Coliseum against the Seattle Seahawks and they lose 16 to 10. In a game that it, you saw the Rams played Seattle the next um later on in the year, 42 to 7. That's the score. So, the Rams have shown the progress under Sean McVay. They continue to get better. Jared Goff has improved in every way. And the sky's the limit for this roster. Now, the defense has to play better. They they have to. This game was not good enough. They won this game because the offense played their butts off. And they put together a rare performance that you just don't see very often. I mean... This game at halftime was the largest scoring halftime that Thursday Night Football had ever seen. So they they broke a record, essentially. Jared Goff is the f- one of three quarterbacks, only three quarterbacks all time, to have a perfect passer rating and throw for 30 passes or more. So, translation... He's the he's one of three all time to have a perfect passer rating when he was legitimately throwing the football down the field consistently. It was a legit passing game. He didn't dink and dunk and he didn't only throw 15 times. Like 30 plus times. Jared Goff just had his best I I mean this is this is one of the best quarterback performances I've ever seen. Like I said, the Rams, if they continue to get this play, I mean, the the sky is seriously the limit. This is a special roster. We were talking about last year. Wow, th- this team might actually be good enough to win a Super Bowl. But you thought, okay, 11-5, they go in the, they go in the playoffs. Anything can happen. They can get hot. Sean McVay, this offense. No, 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 no. No. That's the difference about this team. Last year, you thought that they had a chance. You felt as though they could, you know, win four straight games or five straight. This team, you know, has a chance. This team is the best team in the NFL. They proved, even without their kicker, even with their punter not punting as well, even though they didn't get that big special teams blocked punt that they missed by a hair twice, and even though their defense gave up 31 points, they beat a team that just played in the NFC title game last year. That says a lot. This is not a loss for the Vikings. I mean, it is. It goes in their their, uh, L column, but make no mistake, the Vikings lost to the best team in the NFL. Now, they're not going to look at this and anyone's going to feel sorry for them or anything. And they're not going to look at this like, wow, we lost to the best team in the NFL. They know the Rams are a great team. They know that. It's nothing new. I had Kyle Sloter on the podcast before. The podcast coming up to this one that I just released the morning of Thursday night uh, football. They know. 
Kyle literally told me the best teams in the NFL, the, the Vikings and the Rams. So let me ask you this. I know it was at home. I know the Rams were on the road. Fine. But the Rams have now gone into Oakland. They have had their backs against the wall to start a half. And they have absolutely blown away from the competition in the second half in that Oakland game. The next game, Arizona, the dominant game, the game that shows everybody, hey, when we play bad teams, we're not going to just beat them. We're going to stomp them into the ground. There's the dominant game. So you have the overcoming game, the the pulling away game, the dominant game, and then the Chargers game, which is the validation game. Because that was a legit team. The Chargers are a team that people see in the Super Bowl, and the Rams beat them. Then comes week four. The mainstream media, the... Are we really looking at the best team in the league game? Because all this talk about Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City offense, it's great. Defense isn't very good. Rams defense struggled tonight. One thing you don't see out of Kansas City's offense is the consistency that you saw the Rams offense today. From start to finish, this Rams offense was putting up points. Kansas City, they start to fade away. And while they get up to such a big lead to start, it makes makes fans sweat it out a little bit. Against the 49ers, Jimmy G making that a game before getting hurt. Even going back to the first game, against the Chargers. That game looks like an absolute blowout. They've started that game hotter than anybody could have. Phillip Rivers makes that a 10-point game. That should have been a game that they won by 30. Now, the second game. The game against the Hungry Steelers that had just tied their first game of the year. They don't have a win. They don't have a loss. They go up 21 to nothing. The Steelers come back. Second quarter, 21 unanswered. Sure, the Chiefs won. Chiefs won because the Steelers' secondary was worse than the Chiefs' secondary. That's why. This isn't to hate on the Chiefs. They're a great-looking team. But they're not the Rams. And sure, we'll see that Week 12... Maybe the Chiefs beat the Rams, who knows, but right now, the team you watched tonight, the team that didn't really show, they they put pressure on the quarterback, but they weren't able to to really win the way they, they wanted to on defense. They gave up third down after third down. If they're winning with that team on the field, that offense tonight, that's only going to get better. How do you how do you get better from that? They they almost had 600 yards of total offense. That is a Madden game. That that is video game esque, and they did that. I mean, we have not seen what this Rams team will end up being. I mean, the the sky, as I said before, is the limit. The Rams used Gerald Everett once. They didn't even throw to Tyler Higby. I mean. I said this on the Facebook Live earlier, before the game. Teams know the Rams personnel. It's obvious. They're not doing anything crazy in their personnel. Todd Gurley's out there. Jared Goff is your quarterback. You have your five offensive linemen that aren't going to miss a snap if they all stay healthy. Tyler Higbee in line. And then you have your three receivers. Uh, what is there? Uh, there? There's not really anything to, to talk about. I mean, that's it. That's their personnel. Coming into this game, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and Brandon Cooks all had over 120 snaps logged apiece. Tyler Higbee was over 80. So you, you have a pretty good idea that you are going to go against those three receivers. 
Teams can't stop them. Sean McVay is a mastermind. Somehow, he is putting plays out there. He is developing plays to get it to the point where Goff now has one-on-one matchups. Cooper Cup got open today. Who's covering him? Oh, Anthony Barr. Anthony Barr's talented. Anthony Barr's very athletic. But Anthony Barr is not covering Cooper Cup. Anthony Barr's talented. Anthony Barr's athletic. But he's not covering Todd Gurley or Robert Woods or Brandon Cooks. See, the combination of talent on this roster with the fact that they have the best offensive mind in football in Sean McVay, that is what makes this offense unstoppable. Because at the end of the day, like they said repeatedly during this game, the Rams' offense isn't that complicated. They've basically taken high school concepts and they've turned them into disasters for defenses. I mean, that little jet sweep, that fly option, that's enough, that split second of indecision by an Anthony Barr, by a Mike, uh, an Eric Kendricks, that is, sometimes it's just enough to get that crease. When you get that crease, you're gone, depending on, you know, if you have the right guy. The Rams have the right guy. Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup all go over 100 yards. Jared Goff throws for over 460 yards. Todd Gurley goes over 100 yards total offense. I mean, that's not really even impressive anymore. Todd Gurley goes over 150 yards of total offense is more of the norm. But, yeah, this uh, the Rams are seriously setting the fans up for something fun. They were great last year. They were good last year. I won't say they were great. They were the number one offense with so much room for improvement. There were so many issues in the red zone. Red zone efficiency wasn't there. They scored too quickly. The defense went back on the field and got really tired. And I think you saw that a little bit tonight. This defense is going to get better. Guys, they didn't get to the quarterback as much as I thought. Or you thought. Big deal. It's going to get better. The Rams start every year like this. I mean, they're getting production out of their fourth round gem. A guy that you would take because you like his upside long term. He is already playing meaningful snaps on the best team in football. And then your special teams ace is the quarterback of the defense. And you're winning football games without one of your best players, Akeem Talib. You don't have your all-pro punt returner in Farrell Cooper. You don't even have JoJo Natson, who looks like an all-pro punt returner. So you've completely taken that out of it. I mean, the Rams started these drives. That the, the field position wasn't great. They weren't getting. They weren't breaking off forty-yard returns like a Farrell Cooper would. No, no, no. They were starting these deep. Cooper Cup, for the most part, didn't really return punts. When he did, they called a flag. Um, Blake Countess returned kicks. He got back to around the 25, but nothing where you're absolutely like, wow, they that set us up in you know, feel, you know, know, really good field position. Nothing like that. But even better, the Rams have until next Sunday to prepare for Seattle. Again, I just don't see any scenario where Seattle would win that game. I I mean, that is going to be a blowout. But one game at a time, Rams win for those of you who are tuning in. 38-31 in the big statement win on Thursday Night Football. They topple the Minnesota Vikings in a game that is going to be huge if these two are fighting for a first overall seed Um, although the tiebreaker, it's really if the Rams tie, but they do have the tiebreaker now over the Minnesota Vikings. Rams are the only team also that are 4-0, and they will be watching. Maybe they won't, but it is now up to Miami, and it's up to Kansas City to continue the trend, because if not, the Rams would be the only undefeated team in football. And right now, regardless of what you say, Rams are the most complete team in football. They just played... 
a game where their defense played a, a D minus game at best, and they still won. They put up 38 on offense. I mean, <laughs> the punters throwing 50 yards for God's sakes. I mean, no, great win, very impressive. Sean McVay is just continuing to show exactly why um, I wanted him in the first place, why I wanted to fire Jeff Fisher and get Sean McVay even before the season ended. (laughs) It's just, uh, he is such a gem. He has turned this team, I feel like they're the New England Patriots. I feel like they're going to be that dynasty. This is going to be, you know, they're sustaining, they're going to have sustained success. Jared Goff now in 26 games, 26 games. He has 44 touchdowns. Not bad for the guy that was a bust. Not bad that now he has more touchdowns than Carson Wentz. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. You know, it's... Goff, if if he continues to play like this, I mean, again, I keep using it. Sky's the limit. So, that's really my reaction to this. I wanted to go live and uh, you know throw a little podcast together. I had a lot of fun watching that game, analyzing the game as best as I could while watching it live. Um, I'll take a dive into the film when it comes out um, on all twenty-two, and then I'll look you know the analytical portion um, you know with PFF and and see where everyone stands. Um, overall, if you're a Rams fan, enjoy the ride because it's only going to get better. Um, you know, this is a team that is now seriously looking at Lombardi trophy and the, the whole same old Rams that's gone. The Rams aren't not for a while, you know, unless something unexpected happens, the Rams should be good and they should have cemented their status in the NFC West for the next half decade, um, But, man, I would give Sean McVay a massive contract extension right now. I mean, I don't know what else you would wait for at this point. I'm ready to call him my coach for the next 10 years. Um, Maybe it's too early, but it's like, what have you seen that's better than this? Not much. So that's my take. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Quicker podcast. Obviously, it wasn't 72 minutes some of you were kind of annoyed that it was that long, I understand. Um, but, you know, I had fun interviewing Kyle Slaughter, And, uh, you know, it's always... I'm going to keep doing that whole Behind Enemy Lines segment. I'm um, going to try to find some cool guests for the Seahawks game and so forth. Seahawks and then Denver should be a fun little road trip. Uh, for Jake Ellenbogen, this has been the Downtown Rams podcast. It's been live, but if you're listening to it, Um, now it's probably not live. So, um, thank you guys so much. I will be back with another podcast soon. So take care guys and enjoy victory Friday later.